everybody. Thanks for tuning in today. Today we have a special program and a special interview. And I believe you'll find it very interesting. Today we're going to talk with Anya Amador, who uh, works with uh, Coin.mx. And we're going to talk about the subject of Bitcoin. Hi, Ron. Thank you for having me. You know, this is a subject that hasn't been around for a long time. I got involved in politics back in the 1970s. Uh, guess what? They weren't talking about Bitcoin in the 1970s or the 1980s or the 1990s. And it looks like this subject uh, just came up uh, in the last, uh, what, five years or so. And Bitcoin is sort of leading the charge on cryptocurrencies. Uh, you work with it every day and explain things to people who are interested in this. But when, when did you actually get started? started uh, in studying this and working uh, with Bitcoin? It's been about two years. I've been with Coin.mx uh, since 2013. And as you said, I have the ability to work with people that are new to the industry and just learning about Bitcoin. And what brought it to my attention is just the need for alternatives in our current a monetary system. The reason I've gotten interested and a lot of people have gotten me interested in it is because I've talked about monetary policy for a long time and the big thing is does the uh, Bitcoin fit the mold to be a challenge to the dollar or a substitute for the dollar and maybe coming up with a vehicle that might serve the interests of people outside the realm of overregulation by our government? Absolutely. I know I personally am tired of working so hard for a paper money that is just constantly devalued and worth less as they continue to spend more of it. You know, it's not looking good, Ron. We definitely need an alternative. That's what piqued my interest in the first place. And I think that that's what is getting a lot of people on board with Bitcoin is realizing that this policy may not change in the near future as overspending continues and we're going to need something that we can trust. You know, it's going to be able to maintain its value. Once you start to use this currency, you realize how amazing it is and how bad these fiat currencies are. And uh, when the dollar collapses, and it's going to collapse, the U.S. dollar will collapse in the next five to ten years or sooner, uh, you'll already be on to a new currency and you won't be as hurt. Although they date uh, the beginning of Bitcoin around 2009, I didn't hear much about it and I don't think a lot of other people did either. And I think, uh, like you, we got much more interested in the last, uh, last couple of years. But do you know of any event that took it from being below the radar and then all of a sudden explosion? I think that Overstock.com accepting Bitcoins and several other big companies getting on board made a difference. It helped get the word out there that there is this viable alternative and there are legitimate businesses that are accepting this form of payment. Is this a publicity stunt or are you a true believer in Bitcoin? Oh, I'm a true believer. I love Bitcoin. It's like digital gold. People are feeling this need for an alternative every time they go to the grocery store or the gas pump and they see that, um, you know, the dollar is just worth less and less. You've got people that are coming to this reality each and every day as they continue to work hard um, for money that simply doesn't buy as much as it used to. They're seeing it more in the news as more companies also hop on the Bitcoin train and show people that this is just going to continue to grow. When you talk to the people that are coming in or new, new uh, customers or clients or whatever, is there something that comes up frequently that you have to reassure them about uh, so that uh, they, they can feel more comfortable with uh, using Bitcoins? Sure, I think there's a lot of ambiguity with the concept of Bitcoin mining and just the overall process of how these transactions are recorded and reconciled. So that's a really good starting place is just helping people to understand how the system itself has these inherent checks and balances with all of these computers that are reconciling each transaction. So that's one good starting place with beginners is just understanding um, how the network is secure and why it is that um, it works the way that it does. To provide a service uh, to customers always has to be paid for in a way in order to be in, in business. How does the fee process work? Right, well, it's going to be different for every third-party platform. Um, however, the transaction fees are able to be much lower than any kind of bank um, or other third party that traditionally exists. Not only is the transaction immediate with everything being digital, um, they're able to keep the fees very low because there's so many people contributing to this computing power. How about on, on, on taxes? Just recently, the IRS, you know, has uh, decided that this, that a Bitcoin is an asset and therefore it will be taxed. Does your company support the idea that there'd be a tax on Bitcoin? 
Well, the association definitely wants the government to give some kind of ruling without them being involved at all that leaves people very hesitant of the future of Bitcoin. So by them coming out and giving it some type of classification, I think that's a step in the right direction. Uh, we certainly don't want more government involvement or taxes in any way, shape or form, but um, this at least helps those that are wondering you know, what direction the government is going to take or how much they anticipate on being involved. Um, it gives them a little bit more clarity. I just I think the government has a hard time wrapping their head around it, and therefore this was the most simple, uh, to the point classification they could have given. You know, I talked with the Undersecretary uh, of Financial Intelligence for the U.S. Treasury uh, la last week, and he said we don't consider the virtual currency a currency. Now, <laughs> take what that take from that what you will, but of course yeah. you can still use Bitcoin to buy milk and bacon, uh, but <laughs> they consider it an asset. Do the companies, um, are, are they very much involved in dealing with the government now? I understand there's some regulations on the, on the exchanges. Uh, how much regulation, uh, are you aware of regulations right now that the company has to deal with? Each third party is different depending on how it's classified. As a private member association, uh, the rules are a little bit different for us in that people are voluntarily joining um, and participating in this community. However, um, again, it's just going to be different depending on the business model and people have to be aware of what type of classification they fall under and you know, make sure that they're meeting those standards.